uh, this uh, video is entitled radioactivity and I'm going to go through kind of the, actually the different types of radioactive decay. The three main types are alpha decay, uh, beta decay, gamma decay and these are sh kind of shown here in this diagram. There's an alpha particle, a beta particle, and a gamma particle and this kind of shows the energies that they have. Um, so I'm going to go through these three and I'll come back to this diagram again and talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so radioactivity, a lot of people, you know, they hear radioactivity and they ooh, we're scary, radioactivity, ooh, you know, we're going to start glowing in the dark and stuff like that. But it's not really that complicated. What radioactivity is, is you have unstable atoms, and I think we mentioned in class, or I talked about before, uh, atoms above atomic, or 83 and above, are really unstable. They get, the and the nuclei get really big, and they want to, you know, become more stable. And in order to do that, they have to emit something. So what they're basically doing is they're spitting out a particle and some energy and uh, they do that to become more stable. They want to get smaller, basically, and that, may, that would make them more stable. So just getting rid of a particle is not really that scary. All right, so here, I just want to show this really quick. This is a periodic table uh, shown for element stability, and you can see here's lead. This is kind of the last stable element, and then all these other elements are unstable. They're color-coded for different degrees of instability, but up here, element 83 is when we start talking about elements that are really unstable. And you can see down here is uranium, one we use for atomic bombs, uh, nuclear bombs, and for uh, nuclear power. All right, here's the vocabulary we're going to have to be aware of and know. We have nuclear reactions. All these are nuclear reactions, not chemical reactions. We have the parent nuclei, the thing we start with, the daughter nuclei, the thing we end up with. And we have alpha, beta, and gamma decay, and we also have alpha, beta, and gamma particles. Okay, so here's the types. Uh, the first type is alpha decay. Alpha decay, uh, that's right, the nucleus emits an alpha particle. And you can see here's a diagram of alpha particle. The protons are in red, the neutrons are in blue. So two protons and two neutrons, that's right, that makes a helium-4 nucleus. So an alpha particle is basically the nucleus of a helium atom. So when we have alpha decay, the nucleus emits in order to be more stable, a helium-4 nucleus. Okay, beta. There's actually two kinds of beta decay. Beta minus and, that's right, beta plus. So in beta minus, uh, the atom is unstable, the nucleus is unstable, and there's a neutron, and kind of they're all in there, they're all wiggling around, they're kind of thinking about trying to figure out how we can get more stable, and one of the neutrons volunteers to turn into a proton. Well, in order to do that, the neutron has to emit an electron. Now, it might seem kind of weird that there's like an electron inside a neutron, but uh, when a neutron turns into a proton, it also emits an electron. This electron is considered to be the beta particle. Now, the neutron turns into a proton, so that means our atomic number is actually going up by one. So that means that we're going to form a new element. And here's a diagram of that. Here's the neutron, turns into a proton, emits a beta particle, here's the beta particle coming out. It's basically just an electron, and then there's uh, this thing, neutrino here, which uh, we're not really going to talk about that. So all you really need to know is that, uh, I think the main thing is that uh, a neutron turns into a proton, and in the process of that, emits an electron, and therefore the atomic number of that element goes up, and you get a new element. Okay, beta plus is kind of similar, but it's the opposite. In this case, you know, the, the atom is unstable, all those particles are in the nucleus, and they're all wiggling around in there, and a proton just says, well, you know, I think in order to help the stability of this atom and this nucleus, I, as a proton, I'll volunteer to turn into a neutron. Well, it does that, and then when it does that, it actually emits kind of the opposite of an electron, which is a positron. Now, you don't really need to know what a positron is, but let's just say... Let's just remember that when we do beta plus decay, the proton changes into a neutron and emits a positron, and we lose a proton. So our atomic number is going to go down by one. And when a positron comes out, that's our beta particle. And because we lose a proton, we actually form a new element. And a new element is formed in that case. The element changes. All right, now here's gamma decay. Gamma decay is a little different in, in the sense that uh, we don't emit a particle, we just emit a gamma ray. Now, some people will call it a gamma particle, but a gamma particle is not really a particle like we think of as a proton or a neutron or an electron. 
it's more a, re, uh, a wave of energy and it's gamma energy or gamma rays and it's very high very short wavelength very high energy it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum like x-rays and microwaves and radio waves but this is gamma and has very short wavelength and very high energy and it's just as those neutrons and protons are in there wiggling around trying to figure out what's going on trying to figure out how they get more stable sometimes it'll emit a gamma ray and as i said here it's different because the the element stays the same okay this diagram just shows you the energy of those particles alpha particles can really be stopped by paper they're not very energetic as we say beta particles are more energetic and they can travel through more material but they can be stopped by most metals and then gamma gamma particles actually can travel very deep and through most materials and you can actually be hurt internally by gamma rays that can affect you from the outside of your body. Alpha particles can really be stopped by your clothing or your skin. So in order to get damage from alpha particles, you actually have to kind of ingest them or eat them or breathe them or get them into your system. All right, here's a decay chain. This is called the uranium-238 decay chain. We start up here with uranium-238 and we show all the different kinds of decay that uranium can go through. And when it goes through all these kinds of decay, it ends up down here at lead, lead 206. And as I think I mentioned before, lead is a stable element. And it says right here, stable. So once we hit lead, this basically stays lead. It doesn't change. But you can see that from we go from uranium, we emit an alpha particle, alpha decay. We become thorium. Our, our atomic number goes down by two. And then we actually go through two series of beta decay. And in beta decay, a neutron turns into a proton, so we go up by atomic number, up by one atomic number, and then we go back down through all these alpha decays and through a whole series of alpha and beta minus decays, and we end up here at lead. And I just put this in here. This is Alexander Litvinenko. He was a Russian who was living in Russia, as most Russians do, I suppose. No, well, not all of them. And he moved to the UK because uh, he had, uh, you know, not, he had, um, given some evidence against Alexander, I mean, uh, against Putin. And uh, Putin actually, as it is theorized, sent somebody over to the UK and got this guy somehow, I can't remember exactly how, it was food or something, to eat some polonium-210. And polonium-210 goes through alpha decay. And those particles were inside of him and they did damage to his body and to his internal organs. And he actually ended up dying from polonium-210 poisoning. I think he's the only person to ever have died from polonium-210 poisoning. So they can be dangerous, but uh, you just have to be a little careful. All right, Don't eat polonium-210, I think is the moral of that story. All right, uh, that's it. Thank you, and I hope you uh, found that uh, useful.